Automotive is one of the fastest growing segments in the semiconductor industry. Automotive volumes tend to be more stable with longer life cycles and have significant competitive barriers to entry. But this is a challenging market. Automotive customers are very demanding and look for suppliers that have experience, technical capability, and can deliver quality products and services. My name is Prasad Dhond, and I manage the automotive segment at Amcor. Packaging plays an important role in meeting automotive semiconductor reliability requirements. In this presentation, we will look at trends in automotive semiconductor packaging, some of the biggest challenges and solutions to address these challenges. Most automotive ICs today are using wire-bond packages. However, applications such as Advanced Driver Assist Systems or ADAS and infotainment are driving the use of advanced or non-wirebond packages into automotive. On the right hand side, we can see the use of different package types in automotive by function. For analog products, both signal chain and power in automotive, lead frame packages such as TSSOP, SOIC and MLF, known in the industry as QFN, are popular. Sensors could be overmolded for inertial sensors such as gyros and accelerometers, could be exposed dye for temperature and humidity sensing, or cavity type for pressure sensors. We also offer optical packaging for CMOS image sensors. MCUs are typically packaged in wire bond LQFP and CABGA. GPUs and SOCs are typically in flip chip BGA packaging. Radar transceivers are packaged using low density fan out or flip chip CSP. And on the last line, we see an increased adoption of system and package or SIPs to combine the processor and memory onto a substrate for automotive infotainment applications. The growing adoption of advanced packages in automotive is being driven by four key packages. First is flip chip BGA that is used for ADAS and infotainment processors. Second is flip chip CSP that is used for radar transceivers and higher performance microcontrollers. System and package is used for infotainment modules with processor and memory onto the same substrate for higher performance. And lastly, fan out packages are used for radar transceivers. The popular ADAS features on today's cars are enabled by two systems in the car. The first one is a safety camera that is behind the windshield. And the second one are radar modules that are located in the bumpers of the car. There are two types of radar modules, a long range radar module that is in the front of the car and a short range radar module that goes in the corners of the car on the bumpers. The key packages used in these modules are advanced packages that is non-wire bond packages. The camera module has a vision processor chip that is packaged in flip chip BGA. While the radar module has transceiver ICs that are packaged in low density fan out or flip chip CSP in some cases. It has features like blind spot detect and automatic emergency braking are enabled by radar chips in the car. These radar chips and their packaging are evolving. Here are some of the trends. The first trend is that the 24 gigahertz wideband used for short range radar is phasing out and most new short range radar systems will be based on the 77 to 81 gigahertz band. The packaging impact is that the 24 gigahertz transceivers used to be packaged in QFN, but 77 gigahertz need to use advanced packaging like low density fan out. The second trend is that the radar transceivers are migrating from a silicon germanium process to RF CMOS to achieve lower cost and higher integration. Typically, silicon germanium wafers are 8 inches in diameter, whereas CMOS wafers are 12 inches, and the packaging facility must be able to process these 12 inch wafers. The third trend is that radar transceivers used to be a multi chip solution. Typically, a transmitter, receiver, and a PLL. They are now integrated into a single chip. 
We see the die size and the packet size increasing because of this. The fourth trend is that the MCU, which is currently separate, is now integrated in some cases onto the same silicon as the transceiver. This further increases the die and packet size. These highly integrated radar ICs are packaged in flip chip CSP rather than low density fan out so they can support larger body sizes and maintain board level reliability performance. The last trend that we see is that today the antenna is on the PCB but moving forward some transceivers are integrating the antenna into the package. The antenna could be on the substrate with the RFIC mounted on the top or bottom of the substrate or an alternate approach is that the antenna and RFIC are placed together in a fan-out package connected through RDL. AEC Q100 is the reliability standard that automotive semiconductors are qualified to. Grade 0 is the most stringent, whereas grade 3 is the least stringent. Most flip chip packages today are used in applications that are in cabin and require AEC Q100 grade 2 or grade 3 reliability. However, some customers require grade 1 reliability, which is driven by a desire for higher reliability margin in some higher stress application profiles. With emergent requirements, flip chip packages will need to support grade 0, which is the most stringent level. One of the applications driving this grade zero requirement is automotive microcontrollers. Automotive MCUs are running in high volume today, built on the 90 nanometer and 40 nanometer process nodes. They are packaged in copper wire bond packages like LQFP and CABGA. As MCUs start using 28 nanometer process nodes, some variations will require the use of flip chip packaging. This is being driven by the need for better thermal and electrical performance. Since MCUs can be used anywhere in the car, including some of the hotter parts of the vehicle, they are required to support the most stringent grade zero reliability levels. Infotainment applications are using processors in system in package or SIP form factors. The SIPs combine the processor, memory, and other support components together in a standard form factor such as flip chip BGA. A modular SIP offers several advantages. First, car OEMs can use the same module on different motherboards across their entire vehicle range. This allows software reuse. Second, the SIP speeds up time to market by providing an automotive qualified plug and play solution. And third, it allows greater margins in timing and electrical performance with components that are placed optimally on a substrate. SIPs can also provide significant space savings compared to a module manufactured by an EMS. In an actual application, our SIP replaced the PCB-based module providing more than 50% space savings. Let's look at some of the main challenges in the automotive application and solutions to some of those challenges. The biggest challenge in automotive is what we call the multiplier effect. This shows how a single defect at the component level affects the failure rate of the car. A typical car today might have around 40 ECUs or electronic control units, and each ECU has around 250 components. So a 1 ppm component failure rate translates into roughly 10,000 ppm or 1% failure rate at the car level. To ensure the highest safety standards, we need zero defects. Each supplier in the automotive supply chain strives towards this goal of zero defects to ensure the safety and reliability of the vehicle. Here are some of the focus areas to improve reliability performance of our FCBGA packaging. First, we are evaluating higher reliability materials for key components such as substrates and underfill. Choosing the right chip attach process and using laser groove for wafer dicing is also an important consideration. For key components such as substrates, we go beyond just the materials and establish more stringent automotive substrate design rules. 
We are partnering with strategic and capable substrate suppliers and we also require higher levels of inspection and testing of automotive substrates before they are shipped to us. We are working on developing flip chip BGM material sets for grade one and grade zero operation. This table shows the common failure modes under different reliability stresses. Solder, underfill, thermal interface material, and substrate are the areas that we are specifically looking into. For lead frame products, these are some of the components that we are focused on to improve automotive reliability. Starting from the top right, copper wires. Copper wires are a critical component to achieve aggressive year-on-year -year cost reductions. Traditionally, gold has been the wire of choice, but due to cost and high temperature performance where Kirkendall voiding is observed between the gold and aluminum interface, most new automotive devices are now using copper wire. Second is the lead frame. Lead frames used in automotive applications are roughened to improve adhesion with various interfaces. Some lead frame designs include features such as slots and grooves on the die attached paddles that help improve delamination performance of the package. Third is the mold compound. We are evaluating mold compounds with optimized levels of sulfur for use in automotive applications. Sulfur in the mold compound interacts with copper wires, leading to corrosion and weaker bonds during extended reliability testing. In addition, we have found that optimizing the modulus of the mold compound in relation to modulus of the die attach can improve delamination performance of a lead frame package. This is an example of a package design enhanced for the automotive end market. Automotive customers require solder joint inspection of IC packages mounted on PCBs. But solder joints of leadless MLF, that is QFN packages, are not visible and require the use of expensive X-ray inspection. Plated end lead or PEL options for QFN packages form visible solder fillets that can be inspected using standard AOI or automated optical inspection equipment. There are two options to achieve wettable flanks or plated end leads on QFN packages. The first is called step cut, which is used for saw singulated QFN packages. This can be applied to existing lead frame designs, but it involves an extra saw step prior to lead frame plating during assembly. The second option is called tempered lead frames. This is the option shown on the right hand side. This is the wettable flank option for punch singulated QFN packages. The dimples are created during lead frame manufacturing. Dimpled lead frames can also be used for saw singulated QFN packages, but if the lead pitch is less than one millimeter, saw singulation causes burrs in the dimpled area of the lead frame. Hence, step cut is used for saw singulated QFNs with less than one millimeter lead pitch. Here's another example of an enhanced package design for automotive. Punch singulated QFN packages are popular in automotive applications. These packages have an exposed top edge flange as shown in the picture titled current profile. The interface between the exposed flange and mold compound has a tendency to crack under mechanical stress, such as that during insertion into ATE or burn-in test sockets. Edge protection technology strengthens the flange by depositing a 100 micron thick mold cap on it. There is no change in the package outline and strength of the flange is improved 3x. The edge protection technology combined with dimpled lead frames gives a best-in-class automotive QFN solution. In addition to materials and process improvements, for assembly and test factories that run automotive products, we have established a setup to achieve higher levels of controls. This includes automotive certified operators that assemble products on automotive designated equipment. We use higher levels of automation in these setups to eliminate manual handling whenever possible. We work to lower the particle count for automotive assembly areas. Incoming material can be a source of contamination and failures. So we have established 
standards for stricter monitoring of incoming material contamination. And we have monitoring of key quality indices such as manufacturing quality incidents, new product introduction issues, and supplier quality issues. The automotive supply chain needs to be robust and we work with our suppliers to ensure they are meeting key automotive requirements. We require our key suppliers to have IATF 16949 certification. We also audit these suppliers using VDA 6.3 process audit checklist. We have established intensive supplier quality and process controls to ensure the quality and integrity of the raw material we receive from them. In summary, Wirebond is currently the dominant package in automotive applications, but the use of advanced packages is growing with ADAS and infotainment. Quality and reliability remain the most important challenge with automotive packaging. Improving quality and reliability for automotive involves a combination of direct techniques such as improving material sets and processes, but also indirect techniques such as tighter controls on the factory floor and managing suppliers to ensure the quality of incoming raw materials. Thank you.